Well, welcome to the community calendar. My name is Raina. I'm filling in as host today. And uh, we have a very special guest, Miket Denny McMahon. Oh, it's so good to see you, Miket. How are you? I am doing well. Thank you. It is so good to be here as well. Good. Now, for those of you who may recognize Miket, she does teach Haiti. And Miket, you have a fundraiser coming up here in Detroit Lakes. Can you give us some details? Yes, I am super excited to invite the community to come to our Teach AD fundraiser. It's going to be our 15th annual fundraiser on June 22nd from 5.30 to 7 at Holy Rosary. It's going to take place at the Parish Center. And my mother will be with me. I'm super excited to have her. She will be sharing her story as well regarding education, being someone who never had the opportunity to go to school. Um, she's an amazing cook. So she will be, we will be making some Haitian food like um, spaghetti and have some Haitian coffee. And I extend a warm welcome and invite to the community to come support this program and also come see my mom. So I'm super excited to be back. I will be in DL on the 19th and start visiting some of our friends. And But the event is on the 22nd. Awesome. And can you kind of tell us what Teach Haiti is? So Teach Haiti is a nonprofit that supports children in Haiti who are not able to go to school to emerge from poverty. Um, majority of Haitian lives on less than $2 a day. There is no public education in Haiti. Parents have to pay to go to school. And so this program helps kids who have the potential to learn and have an education. We started the program back in 2007, right in DL. My big ambition was to be able to send 10 children to school. And I thought, man, that's a huge ambition. Who's going to help me to get 10 kids to go to school? But the community embraced me. They embraced the ambition and the vision that I had. And today we have 600 children going to school as a result of um, that welcome from the community. So we are so excited to be back and share updates on what Teach Aid is doing. Wow, that. That's great. And what is the cost for a child to go to school, like per child? It's $480 for a child to go to school for an entire year or $40 a month. Um, It covers um, the tuitions. It covers the, you know, like teacher's salary, one meal for the student per day. We have health care at the school. It covers all of that. Um, For most kids, this is their only chance to be able to go to school. We have a major need for sponsor. We need about 140 sponsors this year. Um, This is the year where we need the most sponsors. We just open enrollment. And um, this is this is an ambitious goal again, just like my 10 was an ambitious goal. This is a huge goal, but I am hoping to be able to get the 140 sponsors this summer so that all of the kids who are on the enrollment um, list can actually go to school next school year. Sure. Um, I, I love your, your mission statement on your website. You, you know, if anyone is interested, you can go and see, um, you know, what this program is about and see pictures, but it, the, their mission statement is, um, it teach Haiti responds to the gospel of Jesus Christ by empowering Haitian children to emerge from poverty through education. Mm-hmm. Um, that's great. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So you you started off. Oh, first, I, I actually want to kind of go back in time a little bit to how you have a Detroit Lakes connection. Can you talk about that? Yes, um, I am from Haiti, where the weather is always 95 to 105. And so that's a legitimate question, how I get to 30 below from Haiti. And so, um, you know, I I grew up in a family of nine, and um, we experienced abject poverty growing up. Education was never um, guaranteed. Food was not guaranteed to the point where my parents had to give up two of my sisters for adoption. And um, a few years later, we found out that um, a family in Detroit Lakes had um, had, um, adopted them. And John and Mary Lee, many of you know them in the community. John was a pastor. Mary was a nurse. They, um, John visited Haiti 
1999 and met me for the first time, met my family. And he offered, he said, I'd, I'd love to help you when I told him my dream. And, but I know that it would never come true because I live in abject poverty. There's no way I would be able to finish school. And he went to the noon Rotary Club. These are my heroes for sure. And um, he asked them if they would sponsor me through the Rotary program. And he did make sure he told them I would be the poorest student they would ever sponsor in the club as a youth exchange student. And it was important that he made that distinction because when you are a youth exchange student, there are some financial obligations your parents have as well from the from the country that you are coming from, like your plane tickets, your insurance, you pay for all of that yourself. But John knew, even if the Rotary Club had said, make it need at least five dollars to pay for something, that would not have happened. I could have lost that opportunity, even if it was five dollars I needed because I didn't have that. But the club embraced the idea, the challenge. They said they will support me wholeheartedly. And um, I came, they they supported me. I came in 2000. It was surreal being in the community. For the first time, having a bedroom to sleep, having a, my own bed and um, going to school where I had all of my school supplies. I never had all of my school supplies, all of my books having food in the fridge. I never had a fridge to start with. I never had electricity really growing up. It was just an amazing opportunity, a life-changing opportunity, gift that was given to me by the community. Um, and that's what inspired me to start Chichedi. I'm like, wow, this community invested so much in me. They were Terrians, the noon, the breakfast, the Coronas, all of them embraced me. And I'm like, I've got to pay it forward at the end. And that's why I started Teach Haiti. I lived in a community that, that showed me kindness. A stranger they didn't even know, but they said, we are going to help you. We are going to make your dream come true. And they did. They embraced me. I went back to Haiti back in 2001 after my J-1 visa expired. I requested for another visa. Again, with the help of the Rotary Club, they they were done with me. They didn't have to help me because their obligation was to help me for one year as a youth exchange student. But my goodness, they continued. I I, I went to Oak Grove. I will never forget when John went to the club. John said, good news, Miket can actually come back to the U.S. to finish her last year of high school and eventually go to Concordia College. But I do need ten thousand dollars for tuition, and she—I mean, we have one week, you know, to get that money. I was so dumbfounded where the club came together and they raised thousands of dollars within a short period of time. People say, "I'll give five hundred, I'll give two hundred, I'll give a thousand. and John was able to to get part of the most of the money right in the club. And um and his family members um helped to get the rest of the money. We were able to get what we needed to get that paperwork from Oak Grove, went to Haiti, and the club continued to support me all the way through um college. And I finished my dream of becoming a nurse became true. I graduated from Concordia College, become became a registered nurse, and um I'm like, my goodness, I've got to do something. I mean, there's something you receive, some type of love, compassion you receive. If you don't pay it forward, I just don't know what type of heart you have because so much had been given to me, so much. And when I thought of returning to Haiti in 2007, I had been in the States for six years, for seven, six and a half years, I had been in the States. And going back to a whole new life that was waiting for me. I would be a person who would go back into a house that had plumbing, electricity. I would be someone who would go back with someone who would not have to worry about will I will I eat today? If I'm sick, can I go to the doctor? All of that, all of these worries were done. I was going back into a life that was fulfilled, being someone who could add something valuable to my community, becoming a nurse. And um, I, I I am just so grateful to this community. They've, they've changed my life and not just my life, but also because of what they've done for me, my younger brother, he's a doctor. 
my older brother, he's a mechanic. He's working. Every single member of my family, they rise up from poverty. Because one person decides to help me, that ends up changing the lives of so many. And if we talk about teaching, that's hundreds of lives are being changed because one person says, I am going to help you. And the community said, I am going to invest in you. And if you want to make a change, that's where it starts with one person, with one person. And so I'm grateful. And that's why I am so passionate about Teach AD because I know the students we are helping will eventually change the narrative of Haiti one day. Well, that's a great story, Miket. And um, our community is such a loving community. And I just think, you know, our, our Northern Minnesota in general, <laughs> in all of our surrounding communities. And um, I'm so glad that we had an impact on your life, not me personally, <laughs> I'm not, but I mean, our communities and, um, and, you know, when we were kind of chatting beforehand and this pay it forward, you're, you were telling me how now your students, mm-hmm. your for- graduates are paying it forward. Can you talk about that? Yeah. So when we started Teach Haiti back in 2007, we didn't have a physical school. We helped students wherever they were in school. So some had never been to school. We supported them. Some had been in school, whether middle school or high school, but could not continue. We supported them. And so as a result of that, currently we have a number of students who graduated from high school and college for a number of years now. And some of them, it's amazing to see their hearts because one of my one of my students, I'm still hoping she can come to the fundraiser in June. She's working on the logistic. She helped her brother to finish high school, help him to go to college. Now he's an accountant. He's working. He's taking, he has a car. He's taking care of himself because Chi Chedi helped that one lady. She goes and help her family. We have another student who um he is our photographer. Um, he is, he's all of the pictures that you may see on social media. He does all of that. That is, that's actually his profession. He's also, um, a civil, um, a mechanic engineer. Um, he helps us with a lot of our issues with cars in Haiti as well. We have another student who is a DJ and civil engineer. So whenever we have programs at the school, cause he does DJ on the side and actually people pay him pretty good money for their parties. And whenever we have a program, we called him. And he would come, he would never accept any money from us because that's my duty to pay it forward. It's an honor for me whenever there's a program I can be part of and help teach Haiti. And we have so many stories like that. Um, this it, It's amazing to see um, the program coming full circle because um, our students are helping, they are working, they are being productive members of the society. And I could not have asked for more. That's great. You know, I love your, um, and again, on your website, it says what we believe. And it says, we believe every child deserves the opportunity to experience the power of education. We also believe education can elevate a nation, but a Christian education has the ability to transform a nation for God. We want our children to not only emerge from poverty, but also live in life worthy of the calling of our Lord Jesus. We seek to build men and women of integrity to lead Haiti for God and by God. Amen. (laughs) Amen. That's that's great. You know, Haiti is going through so much turmoil right now. And pretty much the reason is we have a lot of leaders who only think of themselves. You have leaders with no integrity and um, they only think of themselves. And how different would our narrative be when you have students at a very young age, you are instilling the love of the country in them. You are um, from a very young age, encouraging them to know what we do. We're doing it unto the Lord. And how do we change a nation? We start with those young kids at Teach Haiti. We start by, first of all, show them they are important. They are loved. Just because they are poor 
does not mean they are not worthy. And so we we work on loving yourself because you're made in the image of God. And so we are doing our best to use that platform to transform young men and women to lead Haiti into the path that every Haitian is dreaming of. A Haiti one day where we can venture the streets without thinking something will happen to us. A Haiti where everyone is truly thinking of each other in the community, where somewhere where education can be not a luxury, because that's what it is right now, but just a fundamental right to be able to learn. I mean, my mother has an amazing story. She had never been in school ever. At the age of 50, she paid someone to tutor her to learn how to write her name. And when she wrote her name, she had she was so happy and proud to be able to hold a pen and write her name. And she will also be sharing what that meant to her, the fact that that was taken away from her because she lived in a country where education was not a priority. How do you elevate a nation? You start with a Christian education. You start with a with an education that encourages leadership, that encourages honesty and patriotism. And that's what we do at Teach Haiti. We do our best to do that. The love of the patriotism is so important. That's what we are lacking in Haiti. And I hope our kids will be able to do that one day. Oh, that's great. Um, let's let's say again um, the fundraiser date and time and information. So our fundraiser is um, June twenty second um, at five thirty Holy Rosary. Um, we're just waiting for everyone to come. It's gonna be awesome. Great speakers and um, some Haitian food. Bring your kids, and we have some games and things like that. So the twenty second of June. Is- is there a cost for tickets? No, it's free will donation. Um, we just we just want the community to come and just enjoy it and have updates about Teach Haiti, learn about our projects. We have some amazing projects coming up. Just learn about them and see how you can um, get plugged in. We just initiated a program called Student for Students, and it's a program that is tailored towards schools. Actually, my first in March, I was in Haiti. I was in not Haiti. I was in DL and um, went to the Detroit Lakes High School, Roosevelt High School, um, middle school. Talked about it, and um, it's a program that is we are hoping the schools will join in. It's a program that encourages schools here to help teach Haiti and um, fundraising, pen pal, have a connection with our students, back and forth correspondence, and um, so that's a new project we just launched and we are hoping the schools will embrace it and then really truly be part of of what we are doing. And you have some other great programs. Um, you know, we're kind of running out of time, but you do a, like a sustainable farming. And, and and so I was just reading a little bit about it where you, you the animals are at the school. <laughs> and so you're kind yeah. of teaching them how to farm or, you know, yes. raise these animals. And yeah, 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 we, we have, so our school in Port-au-Prince, it's not a big space, but we have a small garden anyway. It was one of our actually teacher, the graduate student who said, I want to pay it forward by starting a garden at Teach Haiti. And I was thinking, wow, that's amazing. I just don't have this space. And, oh yeah, you have space. Look at right here. Look at this green spot right here. And I didn't see it, but he transformed that small place into an amazing garden. And now we have the kids. It's it's a it's it's a lab for the kids. It's like a nice laboratory. The kids they they've learned about like uh, like nitrogen, the pH, the oxygen, all of that right in that little garden. And they water the plants. They they plant. They harvest. And we have chickens. We have eggs. They come and collect eggs in the morning for the kitchen. And it, it's really cool how they lit up when they see it. We have like bunnies. We have turkeys. We have um good geese and all of that and in my in my hometown where we have a bigger campus we have a bigger farm and all of that we are only we're also teaching them about agriculture teaching them about how to be self um how to sustain themselves because 
they realize, oh, wow, if I plant tomatoes, I don't have to buy it in the streets because it's expensive. And now they are learning how to have their own little gardens at home to save money. And it's been an amazing project. And uh, we are hoping to keep growing it because it's really an important part of what we do. Excellent. And then, um, you know, we encourage everybody to go to the fundraiser on uh, June 22nd at 530 at Holy Rosary. But if you can't, you can donate um, on, uh, through the website. Um, can, well, and the website again is? Our website is teachhady.org. It's one H, teachhady.org. And we we have some major needs. Um, we are really in need of sponsors. It's four hundred and eighty dollars to sponsor a child, or forty dollars a month. Um, we we are in need of about one hundred and forty sponsors this year. We just opened enrollment, and we really could use the community to help us with sponsorship. Other ways people can sponsor just being a monthly supporter. It could be twenty dollars. It could be ten dollars. Because we have a huge deficit in our monthly operating expenses and any donations of any kind whatsoever makes a significant impact for what we are doing. And we continue to rely on this community because DL is our backbone, is our backbone. Regardless how large we become, DL will always be the backbone of Teach AD. And I'm super excited to be back and see everyone. Excellent. So that is again, June 22nd. You can see Miquette and her mom. Um, that's at Holy Rosary, the the kind of parish center there and um, 530 to seven and it's a free will donation. So make sure you come and see Miquette. And um, if you can help out a child, that's great. And or if you need to just want to donate five dollars, then Miquette will take it. <laughs> so yes, thank you do. for yes, your you time, do. Miquette. And so um much. I appreciate you coming on the program and I hopefully we'll see you when you're in town. I hope so too. Thank you so much for this platform to share. I appreciate it. Thank you. And thank you, DL, for being awesome. Yes. Well, that's going to wrap up our community calendar for today. So if you want to get on the community calendar, you can reach out to me. My email is on the screen um, and share your event. So we'll see you next time.